The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. You belong on the water. Adventure begins at the Jersey Shore Boat Sale and Expo, September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th at the Shoretown Ballpark in Lakewood, home of the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. For tickets and more, visit JerseyBoatExpo.com. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's Thursday, August 24th. Unbelievable as it sounds, but we are in the final lap heading towards Labor Day weekend and the unofficial theoretical end to the summer of 2023, but there's still plenty of summer left to go, I will tell you that. A $100,000 fluke in this week's fishing reports. Digital Weekly subscribers to The Fisherman Magazine, of course, saw this headline on Monday afternoon in this week's New Jersey Delaware Bay edition. No, I know, it's a photo of a mahi. We have more on that to talk about in a moment, but let's get to that one call out you might see there, and that's the six figure flounder from the state of Delaware. So I issue congratulations to Michael Goins Jr. and his crew of Ryan Ratchford, Michael Sador, Alex Robertson, and Austin Morgan aboard Me Boat. They were the winners of $108,000 over the weekend in the 2023 Flounder Pounder Open out of Delaware. An amazing single day cash reward and it was a 9.9 .9 pound summer flounder that won all the cash this year for those Jersey guys who trailered down to New Jersey. That's what I understand. Michael, I believe that's correct. Now, I will say we're just a week away from another pretty significant single day cash payout that's gonna be uh, uh, done in Ocean City, New Jersey this time around. It's called NJ Satfest. Now last year's surf only contest was held out of Atlantic City, I believe it was $10,000. Well, this year it's gonna be held on Sunday, August 27th out of Ocean City. And a jumbo fluke like the one you just saw before could net you $15,000 this year. You can find out all the details on the New Jersey Surf Angler Tournament and Festival. That's NJ Satfest at njsatfest.com. Now, if you're planning on surf fishing that weekend anyway, I mean, why not? Why not enter the tournament? Why be one of those, uh, oh, should have been here yesterday statistics? Or, oh boy, I, was, I wish I was in it. That's the kind of regret that you don't wanna have. For example, Steve Sayers was fishing with Andy Marandino on his boat, One Fish Wonder. They trailered down to Delaware the day after the Flounder Pounder over the weekend. A few scary moments with the net there, but the boys ended up weighing in another. 9.9 pound fluke at Hook'em and Cook'em at Indian River Inlet. Steve said he caught that area rug on a seven foot peace token salt bug rod, Shimano Tranks 300 reel, Suffix 832 10 pound braid, a Tsunami high low rig with three ounce ball jig and white glow six inch gulp. Official doormat honors of this week Go to Mark Westcott, who said he climbed aboard the Miss Barnegat Light on Monday and scored this 31-inch, 11-pound doormat fluke on a bucktail and pink gulp. Boy, you gotta have a bucket of gulp, uh, or those Fish Bites Fight Clubs, obviously, if you're heading down out to the fluke grounds this weekend. Gotta. Six-inch gulp grubs, uh, the pink, pink shine, white, and if you want fish after fish, you gotta try that big six-inch gulp uh, or gr uh, grub from uh, Fish Bites, good stuff. This Saturday, August 26th, you can weigh in your doormats to the Doormat Derby. It's being held out of Off the Hook Marina in Cape May. It's presented by the Wildwood Fishing and Boating Expo. You'll find all the details on this Saturday's tournament in the Fisherman Magazine, or go to Facebook at the Doormat Derby. The Doormat Derby, South Jersey, Cape May County. Call 609-377-1617. Now, this week, the Fisherman Magazine's Jenny uh, Ackerman, she fished the Ozarks over this past weekend with Scotty Lex and Frankie Z. You'll see Jenny, she's on that ad for the Doormat Derby. Well, something I covered in the August edition of the Fisherman Magazine, if you have that co uh, copy at home, it was on the Mohawk. It's a tactic that Jenny covers a little bit this week. It's quite beneficial when you're fluking, especially on some of the headboats. 
pitching and letting that bait run. Let's check out Open Boat this week for more advice from Jenny. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. We're back on the good old Surreals with Frankie Z and Scotty Lex and Steve. Fishing the Ozarks tournament right now. So our conditions have calmed down a nice bit. So I'm gonna show you a tactic that I love to use. It's pitching up current. One of the reasons why I love to do this is because I use lighter tackle. So I'm not using a heavy conventional jigging that all day. So what you do is, I mean, the proof is in the pudding here. You take your rod, you pitch it all current, let it drop to the bottom. And the pros to this, which I love, is you're covering more ground area. So you know if that 10 pounder is over here. Whereas if you're just dropping down conventional, you're missing all this space over here. So you drop it down and you're gonna jig it and work it as it goes around all the way to the other side of the boat. So you can see I just covered this whole area and I'm getting a bite right now. But pitching up current is an excellent way to not tire out as quickly when you're fluke fishing. You get to use light spinning tackle. So definitely get yourself a light spinning combo next time you go out fluking and take advantage of what's left of this season. Good luck. Now remember, if you're a fisherman subscriber, you can always bring those jumbo fish back into your favorite tackle shop because you qualify to win a new Steiger Center console, a Yamaha Outboard, plus the entire Minkota Humminbird package. It's our Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Now we've got a New Jersey subscriber, Adrian Taylor, who's on the board this week after bringing back a three plus pound porgy to Julian's bait and tackle earlier this week to take the top slot for SCUP. Want to see some more New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition subscribers on that leaderboard. Good luck, Adrian. Here's Tim Smith with the latest Dreamboat standings update from the Fisherman Magazine. Two more fish hit the board this week and one of them made some minor waves at the top of the scoreboard. The first fish was a 3.17 pound sea robin entered by Sean Vanitas of Lindenhurst, New York, landing him in third place for the category. The second fish is a category leading porgy landed by Adrian Taylor of Tinton Falls, New Jersey. That fish knocked tournament leader Bobby Cifarelli down a spot in the porgy category and shaved a point off his dream boat leading score. The top three now look like this. Luke Citarelli remains in third place with 13 points. Eddie Terrabile holds steady in second place with 18 points. And Bobby Cifarelli loses one point but still holds a commanding lead with 24 points. We also want to remind Dreamboat competitors that the fish of the month for August is black sea bass and we have not yet received a single entry in that category. So seize the opportunity to scoop up that monthly prize, a Tsunami Shield Reel coupled with a Tsunami Armatech Rod and a Dextreme Filet Knife from Dexter Outdoors. The Dreamboat Fishing Challenge is the Fisherman Subscriber Only Multi Species Fishing Competition with a chance to win a 21 foot Steigercraft Center console powered by a Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. So, for the second week in a row in our New Jersey Delaware Bay video fishing forecast, we have a Barracuda to talk about. The folks at Creekside Outfitters in Waretown say they believe it's the first one they've ever weighed. A 21.9 pounder for Matt Stankowitz at the Seaside Lump on a squid jig. Now we've been talking about this Seaside Lump and the amount of squid off in that region for several weeks right now. Um, so if you're looking ahead towards the next couple of days or the weekend to do some scouting around, it's definitely worth a shot to look around that particular area. I would advise you, of course, to come the weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, even Friday afternoon, that area is loaded with folks. So it's loaded with folks, a lot of folks catching squid, and I think it's sounding the fish. So probably heavy traffic this weekend. But again, with all that squid around, the folks at Creekside remind us they have squid jigs in the shop if you're looking to head out. Many New Jersey, Delaware region, even into New York, tackle shops are loading up on the squid jigs. It's well, it's the thing for 2023, right? Uh, and it's always interesting to see how another, another season brings us new reasons to apt, adapt, improvise, and occasionally to overcome. So make sure you're carrying those squid jigs out there on the midshore and uh, offshore grounds, inshore as well, 
Anytime you're heading out, make sure you have those squid jigs because they might show up on your fish finder. And of course, with more inshore bait comes more inshore mid-range options. Mahi can be found now along the reef sites, especially where you'll find those markers, those high flyers. Look for the weed lines and debris. Kevin Maffey and son Tommy were hot, uh, pot hopping 16 to 20 miles out of Absecon Inlet this past weekend, scored some uh, dolphin for a nice fish fry dinner. I, I doubt it was fried, probably on the grill or maybe served with a little mango salsa, but that was done right before Tommy had to head back out to college. A nice father and son trip at the end of summer. Just keep an, uh, an eye, a watchful eye, a careful eye, a discretionary eye, on our NOAA Marine weather forecasts for the week. I'm looking at it on, uh, on Wednesday, midweek, um, but if you're looking to push beyond the horizon, you definitely want to take a, uh, a final look in the morning. But you got the bluefin there on the mid-range grounds, wherever the squid are popping up. Um, and of course, many folks are charging east towards the edge in hopes of finding a good weather window to get out there for yellowfin tuna. Um, big eye as well. Of course, the big, uh, big mid-Atlantic tournament out of Cape May is going on this week. So that radio silence you hear on the VHF on the offshore grounds, that's the reason Captain's trying to stay under the radar on the hunt for cash winning Big Eye and Marlin. I am beginning uh, to get a few more striper reports in the back bays throughout the New Jersey, Delaware region. The bait, of course, is stacking up back there right now. Perhaps a cooler night or two will lead to better options by throwing some of those top waters. Uh, I've been keeping this on my desk because I can't wait to start throwing a couple of the new plugs I picked up. That's the, the new Tsunami Title Pro iPop. Great mimic along the sod banks. But did hear from the folks at Grassy Sound Marina this week. They said noted marine artist Dave Dunleavy was out and about on his boat on Jenkins Sound. Uh, De Deb and Jimmy said uh, that, you know, pff, there they are. David's out there. He's scoring striped bass in the back. Also heard from Eric Lewandowski this week. He checked in with me, said he found tons of hickory shad where he was able to lead to a good score on a striped bass that looks to me to be somewhere in that 28 to 31 inch slot range. The big news at the Jersey Shore over the weekend, of course, was the appearance of pop sensation Taylor Swift in Beach Haven for a friend's wedding turned the Queen City upside down with crowds and social media gawkers. But I bet you what you didn't know was that Taylor likes to wet a line from time to time. Shake it off, Taylor. That one looks like a short fish to me. It's a fake. It's a fake. I know I did it in, fa uh, in Photoshop. But I will tell you that coastal action must be pretty good because all the media stars and social media influencers are here at the Jersey Shore getting it done. My good friend George Shower, the Pocono Outdoors guy, he hit the Jamaica 2 over the weekend with buddy Josh Taylor. But let's check in with George, see what he has to say. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. Hard to believe it's only two weeks away from this Labor Day weekend. And I'll tell you, most anglers I talk to can't wait for this holiday to be over. You know, we've been plagued by uh, tourists and boat traffic this, this uh, whole year on some of our bigger lakes and, uh, and streams. And it's just been crazy trying to get any kind of good fishing in. But I think we're getting close. School season starting. Uh, so expect to see those crowds kind of dissipate and hopefully let us out and get a little bit more fishing in. Uh, some good fishing to be had still. Delaware River continues to produce. Uh, Zach and his son Andrew were out with Tim Keebler on the Fin Seeker Guide Service, out getting us that awesome smallmouth bite on the Delaware. So you guys have that. There's also catfish, you know, flatheads and channels, um, lots of bass. Uh, you can even get some uh, crappies, some uh, bluegills, and perch just for fun as well. So we got a couple of weeks of uh, tough fishing yet, guys, but I think we can work through that. And hopefully in a couple weeks, we'll have the lakes back to ourselves. So looking forward to that. Hope you guys are out getting on them. But from Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. I got a great email this week from Jim Quinn who said, quote, got this on Tuesday after watching your video with Darren Doris at the Nomad booth a bunch of times before heading out. 
Got it on the DTX 200 that you showed. Thanks for the tips. And Jim, thanks for the email. I'll let the folks at Nomad know and Captain Doris as well. If you're looking for some Wahoo tips, Captain Darren, he runs a Facebook uh, group called the uh, Jersey Shore Wahoo Hunters. Go check that out. There are a lot of videos though, similar to that Nomad video that we did, uh, I think it was this past year, might have been the year before, but if you go over to the Fisherman Magazine's YouTube page, um, we have a few thousand different videos online, probably over 42,000 subscribers and growing. So if you're here and you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you like this video, subscribe to this video, and click that little bell up there to get all the notifications anytime that we have a brand new video uploaded and ready to view at YouTube. I'd also invite you to share in the comments area at the bottom of the YouTube page. I do try to answer folks the best I can. Some folks have questions, I try to answer them. And even the critics, with the criticism, I love healthy debate over there, and the best place to do it is right there on the comments page on YouTube. So share your comments and thoughts when you have them. Fluker in the surf, keep an eye out for those speedsters. I keep talking about that. The Benito, I'm getting some good reports. Folks scoring Benita in the surf and inshore waters. Uh, some kingfish and croakers, of course, in South Jersey, and those kingfish are loaded all the way up into the northern stretches. Worms or clams on a high-low rig will get you uh, into a couple of fish fry fish. Of course, fish bites, bag of worms, the little strip baits also do you well. Uh, getting some really good reports throughout the state of panfish. You've got a bunch of spot in the area. Spot are tasty, but also make a great late-season doormat bait. Uh, if you've got a nice live well, take the kids out one day, put the chum pot over, catch yourself a load of spot, put them in the live well, and then go out to the offshore grounds, the wrecks, reefs, and deep water uh, spots. Put that down there on your traditional uh, three-way rig. Look for your big doormat flute for the weekend. We've also talked a lot about the sheep's head uh, action uh, in New Jersey and Delaware throughout this summer. That's still an option. Uh, if you can't get the green crabs, which you're working for the tog as well, get yourself some fiddler crabs, uh, sand crabs from the beach, go rake them up, put them uh, in, a, in a bucket with wet sand at the bottom, bring them back, take them out for the day. I like turning heads by going up to the boardwalk and getting hermit crabs. And when the folks are selling them to me, you know, I, I try to get in a conversation how the kids love the hermit crabs. And I was like, yeah, my kid loves to hook them right behind the eyes for sheep's head. Drives <laughs> the people in the boardwalk shops bonkers. Another interesting catch this week comes from behind Seaside, what looks to be a blenny, which according to the ChesapeakeBay.net are small, brightly colored fish that live in the Chesapeake Bay year round, mostly among oyster reefs. Uh, I got this from John Creeley this week. I sent it over to my buddy John, who's a biologist. He said, yeah, that looks like a benny. There are a couple of different blennies uh, species. Did I say benny? Not benny. It's another visitor. It's called a blenny. Blennies uh, come in striped blenny and the feather blenny not Benny or Shuby. Good time for a reminder. I've seen a lot of beach shark photos on social media of late and plenty of back and forth about what's legal and perhaps not legal. Well, sandbars, AKA brown sharks and sand tiger sharks are federally protected species. It's not New Jersey coming down. It's not New York coming down, Delaware. It's federally protected. Okay, that's a federal law. So what's targeting and what's simply releasing an unintended hookup you made on the beach? Well, this is a reminder from the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife and its enforcement officers that I've shared every year since it was first posted back in 2019. Quote, posing for pictures on the beach with this species or any other species on the prohibited list is a violation of federal regulations. So you catch a prohibited, uh, prohibited list species like a sandbar or sand tiger, uh, you're at the water line and you're trying to unhook that fish to let it go. Don't stop and smile at the camera. If your friends are taking pictures, just diligently work to get that fish released, get it released at the water line and let it go. Turn and smile for the camera or hold the snout in the air. And yes, enforcement can and has fined individuals based on their social media postings. That's the law, that's the rule. I didn't make it, I'm not gonna break it. Don't break it. Look for Mahi this weekend on those inshore and mid-range pots, the high flyers, the weed lines, the debris, the floating debris. 
Uh, if you're the first to break the inlet on, uh, on a particular morning, especially before the weekend, try some casts around those sea buoys that are right outside. Uh, Barracuda, Blennies, who knows what you'll encounter until you drop a line in the salt water at the Jersey Shore. Catch them up this week and I'll see you again next week. Our final weekly video fishing forecast for August. It's coming to you right here at the Fisherman Magazine and thefisherman.com.